Ravens at Chargers. L.A., a four-point home dog. So Baltimore favored by over the key number three. Total of 46.5. It's up from 44.5 where it opened at on Sunday night. And a lot of injuries on both sides of the ball, at least notable ones. Marlon Humphrey, his status is unknown for this game. Joey Bosa has the foot injury. He may have avoided a long-term injury, but who knows if he's going to play this week. Chargers pass defense is vulnerable. Baltimore without Humphrey in the secondary, very vulnerable defense. I'm not surprised about the total move. I have some other notes on this game, but it sounds like you're actually going to bet it. Yeah, I like I like the Chargers. Uh, I like the Chargers initially at three and a half. So now that it's up to four, I definitely like the Chargers. Um, so maybe you can tell me, since you're the one who's married to all your priors on the Ravens uh, and keeps thinking they're the best team in the NFL or wherever you have them. Uh, I didn't have them power rated number one last week. You did for a minute. Week. You had, did. You did. I, last week, last the, the prior week I did, before the Cleveland game, I had Dallas actually power rated number yeah, one Yeah, that's week. married to your priors as well because these are all the teams you were in love with in the preseason. Okay. <laughs> I think Dallas may be the best team in the NFL, but go on. I mean, yeah, anyone may be. These are all teams that are very good and they're – not a ton separating them, obviously. Um, but yeah, when I'm looking at this game, maybe I'm too married to my prior on the Ravens, but I just think like this line is too high on the road for, I know it's the Chargers with like the worst home field that everyone laughs at every week, but it's still a long travel for uh, the Ravens and a quarterback who on the other side of the ball with the Chargers is finally playing like people were expecting all season he was awesome the last couple weeks I mean just shredded the Lions and then his pass catcher speaking of pass catchers letting people down that was an incredible series of drops from the Chargers and it wasn't just one guy although Keenan had two embarrassing ones Donald Parham, uh, and then Quentin Johnson was dreadful as well. Just a couple of absolutely beautiful balls that were not getting caught. And Yeah, that, that last drop by Quentin Johnson, thank you for bringing that up on their final possession. I think it was third down. I mean, you could not have thrown a better ball in that situation because I think they were hurrying up to the line too. Yeah, that was tough to, tough to watch. Uh even though I had the Packers. I was very happy, but yeah, dude, Herbert played out of his mind. I mean, he's playing great finally, and why are we upgrading the Ravens? I mean, they just lost Mark Andrews. Like, that's maybe their most important weapon. This team is spending a large chunk of its offensive snaps targeting Odell Beckham Jr. with two rebuilt ACLs in 2023. I I mean, that is not a good good strategy. Okay. All right. I know he's had some nice plays, but ah, man, that's not where I'd want to be as an offense. And this defense, which I've been skeptical of all year, I'm impressed by them. I think that, you know, their their coordinator is doing amazing work. Like, because I just don't think this is that talented of a, of a defense that the Ravens have. So they're starting to look a little more like the team I thought they were going to be. Deshaun Watson shredded these guys in the second half. I mean, absolutely killed them. And I think the Bengals were probably going to do some pretty good work, too, if they had a quarterback that was above the threshold. So I don't think this Ravens defense is all that. And you got this stupid Chargers team that I'm going to bet on again playing for their season at home against a pretty banged up Ravens team. Like you said, Ronnie Stanley may not play. either. I just think this line is too high, but you know what? It's the stupid chargers. So if the stupid chargers lose by 14 points at home, am I going to be surprised? Not really. I I just think (laughs) because of how good Herbert can be at times though, I think, honestly, money line might be better than taking the points here, but I'll probably have a little bit of both. I don't necessarily have a take on the spread for this game. I kind of lean chargers. My numbers kind of lean chargers on the surface, but I have more of an, at least an opinion, not that I'm betting it, but a take on the total because the chargers have the third 
highest, third-ranked adjusted pace in the NFL. Baltimore ranks bottom four in that category. So game script is going to be big here because if the Chargers are controlling the pace and Justin Herbert is having success, or even if he's not, if the Chargers are at least able to limit Baltimore's rushing attack, and even if they're facing a negative game script, I totally understand the movement towards the over here, even up a couple points. And LA's secondary is the issue. It's not its run defense that's been the problem. This secondary is getting gashed outside of Asante Samuel Jr., who's even had his fair share of hiccups too. Lamar Jackson ranking seventh among qualified quarterbacks and drop back success rate. So unless Baltimore is just up, a couple scores and running the ball at that very slow tempo and LA can't stop it. Even though, like I mentioned, the chargers run defense is their strong suit on that side of the ball. Then maybe it goes under, but then again, red zone efficiency too is a big reason why we're seeing a bunch of unders. The over movement makes sense to me, the movement towards the over. So I kind of like your positioning on the side. I'm not at least disagreeing with you on it. Yeah, I hear you on the total, too. I mean, I believe the Chargers have been one of the strongest teams in the red zone overall. I mean, you saw the dots Herbert was throwing, if people could catch them, last week. And then, obviously, with Lamar Jackson and the Ravens rushing game overall, they're a little stronger in the red zone than most teams because of that extra dimension he gives you. But that's another thing to look out for because I'm curious to see what he looks like. He had some ugly moments in that Bengals game where... They tried to get him to the outside, which I thought was really weird because he was already a little banged up and he just didn't look right, like not moving like he normally does. Obviously, extra time off here, so maybe... He got hurt. The t- The turf was an issue, and he, I think he played through an ankle yeah, injury. Yeah, like, that's why I thought it was weird why it. they were like rolling him out in some spots where it, like, it was designed. So really yeah. strange uh, when you're, especially when you're up in a game like that. I just would not even want to do that. It seems very weird. But if he's normal, then yeah, I, I think this is two two red zone offenses that that should should convert. Which is that's honestly the biggest thing when it comes to totals. You know, like you need red zone touchdowns. Field goals are not going to get you to the over in most cases, as we saw with the one that's still hurting me from earlier in the season. Ravens and Titans like you can kick all the field goals you want it's gonna be tough to go over hopefully for anybody betting the over there is some red zone efficiency and I think if the Chargers convert inside the 20 yard line you're gonna cover your bet I hope I hope so Chargers plus four are you gonna wait to see if it spikes up could wait and see if there's a four and a half I think that's fair I mean that's can be a good number to have at times so yeah, I I think, though, overall, like I said, the money line is probably good in this spot because a lot of Chargers covers are probably Chargers wins. 